Welcome to Legends Live. What you just saw is the promo video for a brand new Legends Care program that the MBRPA just announced and just went live. The Legends HBCU scholarship for undergraduates attending HBCUs across the country is live now. You can find out more at legendsofbasketball.com slash HBCU. We have got former Oral Roberts Golden Eagle. We have, he was a former Washington Bullet and Indiana Pacer, and he is currently in his 13th season as an NBA official. We've got Haywood Workman with us. Haywood, thank you for joining us, man. How you doing, Tyler? Oh, I'm good. First things first, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm on the grind, man. The season's about over, so I'm just grinding out the last probably month or so. Again. Yeah. I know we've seen a lot about – you know, the players playing the the back to backs and three games and four nights, but that's got to be tough on the refs, too, I'd imagine. Not so many back to backs, but just the travel in general. Um, mm -hmm. There's been a lot of game changes because a couple of guys have tested positive. Mm -hmm. So or contact tracing. So guys have gotten pulled off of games and rerouted. So it kind of messes up your routine. Right. As referees, you kind of like to stick to the same routine because, you know, it's a comfort zone. Right. You know, trying to get to. Now, I mentioned you went to Oral Roberts. Congratulations uh, on the Sweet 16. Uh, your Golden Eagles made it. Did you, did you get to uh, see much of them? Not so much. Um, really, I don't watch college basketball. <laughs> okay. I, I don't. I, I watch, you know, pros. Because all those guys are trying to get to the pros. Right. So, but I, I didn't really watch. Them. But, I, you know, I followed them a little bit. But now, Oral Roberts, we were the Titans back then oh okay excuse me <laughs> then, yeah, yeah they, we they the switched titans. it up we were, we were the titans and and then school got in a little bit of trouble so they kind of you know did an overhaul change the names got and you. got the program back to where it needed to be got you got you. but i have to give a shout out i can't go without yeah, giving please. a shout out to what's what's the same state that's where okay. i started that's where i started in college playing okay. football and basketball there where i played for bill hayes Mm -hmm. And I played for Clarence Big House Games. Oh, the legend. Yeah. So that's where it all started. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to them. What uh, What do you remember about playing for, for Big House Games? At the time, uh, 85 in the tournament, we are playing against the only team undefeated in the country, which was Virginia Union, mm -hmm. which is famous. Charles Oakley was on the mm -hmm. team. And the game plan was to stall. Okay. <laughs> okay. So as long as you big, could. Big House told me, starting point guard, he goes, if you shoot that ball, I'm going to hit you upside your head. <laughs> <laughs> so we I mean, that's pretty good coaching. Ball, we held the ball, beat them 51-50. Okay. So y'all uh, broke the undefeated record. Undefeated. Only team in the country at that time that was undefeated. And you said you played football there as well? Yes. Played football there also. What the, what position were you say? Quarterback. Oh, okay. So you you was pulling double duty. Well, I I didn't play as much as I liked, but I played, <laughs> and I I would like to say I was the Charlie Ward before Charlie Ward. <laughs> okay, the OG Charlie Ward. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Oral Roberts in Oklahoma. How'd you end up from you know going from Winston Salem State all the way to Oklahoma? Like, how'd you end up there? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, mm. Oral Roberts. Um. Uh, the coach by the name of Dave Pritchard, his son was playing at Myers Park where I went to high school mm. while I was at Winston-Salem. And okay. six foot two, six foot three, 175 pounds. Uh, six foot four, 245 defense hand hit me and I said, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, let, me, let me get back on the court. So I just called my high school coach and said, hey, if you find a school that will, you know, take me to transfer as a basketball player, I just want to play basketball. Right. And Dave Pritchard, son was at Mars Park, so that's kind of how it worked itself out. Mm -hmm. And I went and looked at the campus. They told me what, what, you know, what was expected and that they were going to build a team around me. And I left. <laughs> I <transferred>. <laughs> that was all you needed to hear. That's all I needed. And it was, you know, going from not not to say what's the Salem, I couldn't have made it in. They were from TV games, you know, right. being on TV and, and going different cities a little bit bigger. It was just a little bit bigger 
you know, platform. So yeah. I think every kid wants to be on that platform, but now opportunities are better, you know, at a at smaller schools. But at that time, that's yeah, what I different. wanted. So that's yeah. what I, I, I took and chose. Yeah. Uh, mentioned you were in your uh, 13th season as an NBA ref. You got a game today. So thank you for, for taking some time with this. I'm just curious, what's your, do you have like a game day process or routine? You said officials like routine. Yeah, it's a routine. Sometimes we, we the testing now kind of throws everything mm -hmm. off. Uh, this morning, eight o'clock, had to go test. Um, I'll test again when I get to the arena. Um, mm -hmm. Just depends on how I'm feeling. Some right. mornings you'll get up and you you know you get about an hour workout, cardio, or you know do some kind of stretching stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But not too much out and about. Some guys play golf. You know, oh, wow. I'm, not, I'm not so much of a golfer on the day of the game. <laughs> you know, so. It, but you want to be somewhere where it's comfortable. You can go somewhere and get your nice lunch and relax and enjoy your day and, and just get your mind ready for the game. Right. Now you said there have been some of the changes because the you know pandemic, of course. What are some of those changes that they like you mentioned the daily testing, but what what else that has changed up for you guys? Well, that's that's every day. I get tested every day. So whether you're officiating or not. Right. So tomorrow, gotcha. like tomorrow, when I before I leave Houston, I have to test before I go to the next city. Mm. So normally I'm a guy I like to get to where I'm going. So right. usually I would be on a six o'clock flight headed to the next city. But now I can't. So it kind of throws you off because yeah. sometimes your whole day is in the airport. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't we don't fly. We don't fly private. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. So you <laughs> got to get out there and get, get on that that bus to get to the plane or get on the train to get to the plane you right. know so that that's kind of hectic and it, and it makes you a little nervous you know because sure. you don't know who people are and have they gotten tested or being yeah. vaccinated things like that so it it, it it makes it a little difficult you know in your challenge of traveling definitely now you played until 2000 did you officiate any against any former teammates or any guys you played against uh, probably Vince. Vince okay, this car. Okay, yeah, Vince yeah. Because yeah. he didn't want to quit, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so I I, I repped a couple of his games. Uh, most of the guys uh, are coaches. Yeah. That I, that I played with Sam Castell. Mm -hmm. um, um, Sam Mitchell was was a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, but most most of the guys there, they're all they're all assistant coaches that I played with right. or against. Now you played as uh, NBA, the CBA, the WBL, uh, as well as playing overseas. What do you remember about playing overseas? Um, the story when I when I went to Oral Roberts, we went to Belgium. Okay. We went to, Bel we went to Belgium, <laughs> and we had uh, five games in ten days. Okay. And there was there was uh, breakfast. They said, "Hey, before practice, you can go get you some breakfast." So I'll go down. We're at this resort. Go down and try to get some cereal. And trying to get the cereal, was like, hey, there's no milk. So the girl was like, hold on, we'll be right back. <laughs> Run out in the back, <laughs> milk the cow, and come back. I was like, oh, man, <laughs> I could never, I could never go overseas and play. I wish I, <laughs> I hope I don't have to go overseas. And so I played in Washington, and Washington didn't want to resign me. They wasn't sure. So I had the opportunity to make some guaranteed money. Mm. And I went to Italy. I went to Italy. Mm. So in going to Italy, I think that probably was the best another good decision that i made that i didn't know it was going to be a good decision because i got right. to see the world i played in four different championships in two years so it was i live right on the beach <laughs> so okay, i would yeah, go out that's, on that the, ain't bad i go out on the rooftop and look and see who's out on the beach and then like, oh, i think i'll go out there and read the usa <laughs> today <laughs> but it, it was a good experience to go to another country and learn and see those things that you looked at in your history books Right. You know, as growing up as a kid, so you know, I got to go to those places. So that was mm -hmm. that was really interesting. I'd say they, they probably had a, a better milk situation in Italy. <laughs> I'd say well, they it was just it was just that place. Okay. <laughs> but that that just like made me nah I couldn't do that. But yeah, it, it, it turned out to be really good. And then I played um I finished my career um playing in Jerusalem. Okay. How was that? Hop well. Uh me and my best friend, we called it is real. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was, it was, it was real. It was real. Yeah. It was a good experience. 
Um, but I would say to anyone in the world, if you have a chance to go to Israel, go. Mm. You have to go. And, and, and I've walked where they said Jesus walked. I went and I seen it for my own eyes. I touched it. Um, and that, that's a good experience. I would say yeah. if you ever get a chance, you, you have to go. Definitely. Yeah. Jumping back uh, to the NBA a bit, during your days with the Pacers, you had some like some battles against the the Knicks, the Hawks, Magic. What, what do you remember about those? Some of those playoff battles. Just most of it was with the Knicks, but the team when I got there, the team hadn't hadn't gotten past the first round, mm -hmm. and when Pooh got hurt, Pooh Richardson got hurt, Vern Fleming started, and then they. they they switched it around and put me in the starting lineup, man. I, I didn't want to give it back. <laughs> that was the whole thing. Don't don't give it back. And so getting to those playoffs and playing against the Knicks, man, it was like they were going to hit you. And if you didn't hit them back, right. you know, you 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 kind of cowered down and they would beat you. And yeah. It was a it was just a mental thing. So it was a lot of pushing back. And we had some guys that, that wasn't scared to, you know, push back. Mm. And they've changed all those rules now, and they want me to call those <laughs> fouls. <laughs> like, <laughs> man, there was a flagrance now. <laughs> right. So, how do you feel about that? Like, in your day, that was probably just a regular foul, if that. Now it's, you know, flagrant, maybe flagrant too. What do you think about just the way that the game's changed in that aspect? I think it changed the game changed for for safety. Yeah. For the most part, and then you know. Guys out there competing, they want to be the best. And, you know, you don't want to make fights just just right. because of a hard foul or something like that. But uh, I look at it the way um, my kids, my kids playing. I, I, would your kid be able to do the things that you did growing up? And most right. people go, no, they 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 can't go <laughs> right. out there and catch frogs. <laughs> right. They, you know, they don't Different know how era. to make up games. You know, right. you have all these options. So, kids kids these days they don't they don't know how to do that. And it, some of it it's it's a it's a bad thing. I, I think like with socializing, they don't know right. how to socialize. So now it's gimme gimme gimme. It's entitlement. A lot of times I see the kids when I'm watching the game, I, I, I watch it, but I'm reffing. They're trying to play for the foul. Right. You know, as opposed to just score the basket. Right. If you're a good player, it doesn't matter if he's going to foul you because he's going to foul you anyway. Right. Just score the basket. the basket. Yeah. Well, yeah don't, don't worry about if I'm going to call a foul or not. Just get the basket. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're trying to get a foul now, you you don't know what you're doing until you see it on the tape. Yeah, and uh, a lot of guys, I tell them, "Hey, man, you had the ball. You changed direction. You hit him, <laughs> right? And now you want me to call the foul? Right. He didn't do anything wrong." He said, "But he made contact." I'm like, yeah, but you was the one that caused it, right? Right. You so as referees, it. yeah. So referees, I say to the fans that are watching the game, turn the volume down, <laughs> turn Barkley down, <laughs> turn Jack <laughs> down, turn Jack down, and then watch the game, right? And now when you, you see the referee make a call, now you get to determine. it. You're not right. being influenced by what somebody's telling you. Mm -hmm. So, and then another thing is as referees, we're always looking at the defense. Because mm -hmm. the defense is going to disrupt the offensive player. So we're always right. looking at the defensive, defensive player. Guys, that makes sense. So if you see the defense is legal or doesn't mm -hmm. do anything illegal based on the rule, it's hard to call a foul on them. Right. But they'll go, my hands were up. They were straight up. No, he's, no, the contact made your hands go straight up. <laughs> right. Usually now they you hit them and then yeah. they put their hands up. And right. you say, I was straight up. No, the contact. And then he hit you and your hands went straight up. Right. But playing the game, you don't notice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I was straight up. Yeah, but then you tried to block right at the end and you hit him on the arm. I know I didn't. You're like, right. <laughs> and now we got to have this argument or whatever. So. That's all a part of the game. It's all yeah. Game. What the, I guess I would ask, what's the the proper way, I guess, for a player, like if he disagrees with the call, what's the, the proper way to, I guess, pull you aside or plead his case? I would say the first thing you should do is go, what did I do? Okay. Because the, the referee is, he's not trying to be wrong. Right. You mm -hmm. know, so he's only going to call what he sees. And if he can't see it, 
he doesn't call it. Right. And then based on the angles, he might not even have the best angle. The, the person that's furthest away has the best angle. He he may choose. Uh, he don't want to guess. Hmm. You know, for the theories is you you referee the defense, call in your area in your primary area, not hmm. based on you know proximity, because sometimes proximity of your area you can't see right. in the angle. Yeah. All right. Trust your partners. <laughs> Trust your two partners, Definitely. and don't guess. Yeah, and don't get so. If I don't see it, you're not. I'm not calling it, right. even though I'm standing right there. And sometimes what you think you saw is not what happened because of depth perception. Mm, that's true. So now when you go and look at it on instant replay and go, man, how did he miss that? You're like, dude, I gotta make a decision. Right, split second. <laughs> split second. But now yeah. sometimes I process it. And he missed the shot, and then I go, yeah, he hit him on the arm. That made him miss that shot. Right. Now I call it late. They go, well, why did you call it late? I, like, I wanted to make sure I saw what I saw. <laughs> right. You rather me not call it at all? <laughs> right. You rather me yeah. call it late and get it right, or guess and get it wrong? Right. So that. But I would I would say to a player, the first thing is, ask the ref, what would I do? Mm. And, and and the ref will explain what he saw. And that that's basically it. Mm. <laughs> Has a player uh, ever come up to you like, man, you know what? I was wrong. Man, I, I did actually foul him. I was wrong about that. Has that ever happened to you as a ref? Oh, all the time. Really? Okay. All the time. Okay. I'm, I'm surprised, but I feel like we see on TV, they, they think they've never committed a foul. Well, that's true, too. <laughs> that's, that's true, too. That is definitely true. Because now the thing is, you'll, hear, you'll have a player go, hey, man, he's holding me. Mm. And then I'll come back and I'll say, okay, he said the same thing about you. Right. So now which one of you are right? But <laughs> okay. usually the guy that's complaining, <laughs> he's doing all the dirt. <laughs> right. Right. So. Now, jumping back to your playing days, I saw a video was circulating of you and Reggie Miller uh, doing some dance steps before a game yeah, who uh who, who choreographed those like how, how'd that come about Ooh. well one thing was i was the 15th player on the team like i said until Pooh got hurt then Vern fleming got hurt that just mm -hmm. put me into the starting lineup so being the 15th player on the team you got to get your shine you got to get in front <laughs> of that camera so if you're not on the court you got to do something to get some attention so my yeah. thing was i gotta get with reggie <laughs> you always got the camera reggie. on him he always got the camera on. So Janet Jackson had came to the concert. Uh, Reggie Miller used to have the Jerry curl looking like Michael Jackson back in the day. So it all fit. Right. <laughs> so we just came up with it. We just we just kept, we kept talking about it, talking about it, like at his house one day. It's like, all right, we're gonna do this. And then it just it took off and it had its own dynamics because the introduction was based on who was starting. Right. But ours was like, we're going to warm y'all up. <laughs> we're going to give you a little Michael <laughs> Jackson and get you warmed up. <laughs> I'll say hit the moonwalk on him. Had to hit the moonwalk all of it. <laughs> what do you remember about playing with Reggie Miller? Competitive. Very, mm -hmm. very competitive. And for our, the on <laughs> And people are like, Reggie is a guy. Reggie is a tremendous guy. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to playing anything, Oh yeah, he's a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> he trying, he trying to kick your butt. I'm telling yeah, you. By any means, teammates want to fight, right? Because he out there talking trash, and it's just practice. <laughs> so, you know, but tremendous guy, man. He he one of the best guys you ever want to be around. Mm -hmm. Is he is he one of the better trash talkers of I guess that that era, that nineties, early two thousands era? I feel like he, well, I would he have gets under gas skin. I would have to put him up there, but I'll tell you, everybody that gets to the league, talk trash. They talk trash. <laughs> <laughs> talk trash. Because you, you have to. If yeah. you're a 15th player on the team and you can't play against the first player and go back at him, you might not last. Right. Might not last. So you have to have that confidence about you. Mm. Do you have now fish guys other guys and it, it takes you back and you laugh like oh that's a new one like you hear like some any new trash talk or it's all 
It's all about the yeah. same. It all cycles. It's all. It's all the same. Yeah. It's all. It's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same. I, I have. You know. I. I don't know. I never said this, but Draymond. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he's always out there talking. <laughs> So Draymond and I are having a conversation about a foul or not, and the other players go, "You gonna let him talk to you like that?" And I go, "Man, Draymond is just talking. Right? He's trying to psych y'all out because he's not gonna change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's he doing this talking. for y'all. Yeah. He's doing this for y'all, so it's not for me, but he's talking to me. So, <laughs> so it, it just happens, man. Oh, yeah. It's part of the game. Yeah. Now, what the like? What's the process to becoming an official? Well, I would say mine was a little different because I kind of had a foot in the door. Mm -hmm. But I started with middle school girls. Okay. I signed up with the local high school association, and I just had to go through the ranks with middle school girls. And as I was doing that, I was repping in the CBA. Okay. So, and then it got to the point where I don't want to do college. I just want to do pro. So I just tried to make myself available when I crossed over from the CBA to the back then was the D league mm-hmm. and I just tried to make myself accessible to as many games as I could. Right. So I, I, everybody has to do that. You're recruited. So you could be at an AAU game. Somebody mm-hmm. likes you or somebody sees you. That's a referee referees, kids out there right. or a recruiters there or basketball, a college camp, something like that. So, you're, you're kind of recruited now, and then you go through the process of being invited to maybe a, a camp. Then if you get past that, like the grand path, you'll be able to summer league. If you can get past that, then you may get on the staff as a G League. And then hopefully from the G League, you, you may get in the W. And from the W, you might go to the G League. You could, you could come straight to the NBA. So now they're looking for more referees because now we got, what, the Basketball African League? Mm-hmm. So some referees, G League referees, are gonna have to go over there and help train mm. the Africans over there to to make up for that league over there. Have referees, so it that's that's pretty much the process. But you know, I kind of got expedited mm. with my process, so it took about five years okay. for me. You know, and I preach this to all high school kids. <laughs> you know, college. Mm. Hey man, you play the game. It'd be easier for you to be a ref in the NBA than it'd be trying to play yeah you know because you yeah. have to be really special to get to the nba as a player right. you really do you got to be something different than the rest but as a referee you could be used because you know the game you could pick it up quicker right so what what do you think the toughest transition was going from player to official was? um wanting to be liked <laughs> okay. Not, not, not giving a heck about you know <laughs> right. what, what your peers that you just played with or played against or a coach mm. that coach you. You know you can't care. Right. You can't you can't care. You can't worry about what they think. You you, you got a job to do. Do my job. Mm. They're gonna they're gonna just disagree because they're trying to win. Right. And you don't take it personal. Just do your job and you make sure you let them know that too. And more so now, you you take a little more, you know. Whereas mm-hmm. I, I I may snap back <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> okay. Just in me because I play, so right. you know. And then trying to get that respect. Mm-hmm. You're trying to you're trying to get that respect. I, I Leon may have a little different because he was he started ten years before me, mm-hmm. so he may have a different opinion about it. But I think it's it's not giving a heck about what my friend now is the coach right what he cares about if i got it right or if i got it wrong right you know how much is he going to respect my call mm. sometimes i have to use those terms back on the playground <laughs> like hey man <laughs> Take respect my call respect my call right. i'm the ref right. respect my call because right. if you don't respect my call somebody gonna call and go <laughs> <laughs> that's how it is out there yeah did any of your former teammates or anything like the you know the Sam Mitchell sort of the guy? Did they ever give you a hard time? Like just like even oh, Sam, not Sam, even Sam on a game. They're always on me. They're always on me. <laughs> Come on, will you play. You know that. <laughs> See, yeah, but they changed the rules. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they changed. They changed the rules on that. So, but it's it's a part of the game. Yeah, it's just a part of the game. 
Do you have a, a most memorable or what a favorite game that you've repped in your 13 years? I rep Colby's last game. Oh, the the 60 points. Wow. What what was that like? What do you remember about that? Um I wasn't sure if it was an offensive foul, but I'm glad <laughs> I didn't call it. How about that? Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I wasn't able to guess, <laughs> but I'm glad I did. Right. Yeah. But repping that last game and now the things that have happened, you know, mm. tragic death, you know, now that that's really, really special. He signed my jersey. So mm. I have my jersey for the game. You have a favorite arena or a favorite city like to, to hit as a referee? Anywhere on the weekend. Okay. <laughs> Anywhere on the weekend. That city, no matter small, big, that city's buzzing because it's the weekend most of the time. And there's a game. People are before pandemic, people are trying to go to that game. So it's it's a it's a the energy in the city and the energy in the arena is, is what makes it for to me for a good game. Mm-hmm. You know, Can now you that the, the fans aren't there as much, it's kinda it feels like to me it feels like a practice scrimmage mm-hmm. game. You know, right. so but when the people were in the building, it's the energy that you get. Do you prefer like the less fans? I would say yeah to work. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah. To work because you really concentrate and you, you're not really distracted too much from what the fans are saying and what's going on with the fans. Right. So you really you really get to work and concentrate on, on the craft hmm. with with no fans. I'll say without uh, people on your back for whatever you, whatever call you make right or wrong is going to be somebody on right. your back. So right, you, you you get a little bit now. They're a little bit. They're not that <laughs> close, but you still you might get one heckler. You know, <laughs> right? That's uh, yeah. Like you said, that's the game. That's the game. You got it. <laughs> that's that's just the game. And sometimes during the timeouts, you don't see. You know they're in commercials, so sometimes mm-hmm. you say something back. You know, it's easy <laughs> to call it when you're in the fifteenth row. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And look at the re- and look at the jumbotron. <laughs> right, you're right there. Yeah, right. You got it right. <laughs> uh, before we let you go, a couple more questions. Do you have any advice for there's kids out there now that are, are looking to get an officiating, whether NBA, college, the W, or any of it on the professional level? Um, it's it's a process. It's a grind. I just say try to see as many possible. I mean, mm. just yesterday. I made a phone call to my daughter, my my oldest daughter. She wants to get back into officiating, so in the Oklahoma City area. Mm. So I made a couple calls to guys that were in the program that are doing college ball. So hopefully they'll help her out, and you know, and help her through that process. Definitely. And one last one. Uh, yeah, we know you got a game today. We ask all our legends. We're getting season two of our playlist together. So what uh, what are you listening to when you? On the way to the stadium, when you at the oh, airport, man. when you walking onto the court, man, y'all what need to, uh... you need to follow. You need to come and follow me one day. Okay. <laughs> so I'm talking about when I'm off, like a day off. Okay. Follow me with with, with, with my buddies, a couple of my my older guys. So okay. My, actually, my name, my nickname is DJ. Help me out. <laughs> okay. So yeah. <laughs> so when we're sitting around, they be like, DJ, come on, man, play something for me. So I'm the DJ that finds the other DJs. Okay. And I play it right. So right now, I'm on uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff has mm-hmm. a, a free app mm-hmm. and DJ Scratch. So they have different okay. mixes. So it depends on the mood, you know. But my playlist, I I like to listen to the original songs that's all been sampled. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. the original Old Franklin, right. the, you know, some of those funky James Brown. Mm. You know, and when a song comes on, I'm trying to find out who who's the original. <laughs> right. Trying where's to find, the, you know, who's the, the original. Source? Yeah, where's the source? So I'm trying to find who the source on, on most of the songs. And, you know, I can listen to them because they're current. Right. Because they've been sampled. Right. But I never knew what the song was. What the original song. <laughs> you know, yeah. so what the original song. So sometimes it, I play that. But right now, like I said, I'll, I'll go through the Jazzy Jeff, DJ Scratch. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll listen to that, you know, probably after the game, the wind down, you mm-hmm. know, I'll sit outside and then enjoy the night before I take it in. 
Yeah. And I'll just play some music, you know, and reflect on, you know, some of the calls I made and, and what I did out there, how I could have done something better or, you know, next time I see the, these players or this coach, you know, this is what I'm going to say to them, Great. things like that. Mm. All right, well, we'll uh, we'll let you get to your game. Thank you for joining us, uh, DJ. Help me out. Is that DJ? Help me out. Is that DJ? Help me out. DJ, <laughs> DJ, help, DJ me out. help. Thank you so much for joining us, man. All right, no, no problem. Anytime. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All right, thank you. All right, do it for Legends Live, kind of. Uh, as you know, the new episodes live every Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, on NBA Alumni Twitter. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter page. Viewers, uh, I'd like to remind you, you can watch replays of any episode at legendsofbasketball.com slash legends live. You can catch the audio replay by searching for legends live wherever you get your podcast. I'd like to give a big thank you to Haywood for joining us, to Bridget, Julio, and Aaron behind the scenes. I'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see you next Thursday.